Greetings, beloved team of 144 All Star Seeds, Love Workers, and Way Shores. It is 1212 on 872019. The Divine Feminine energies are coming in fully now. These waves are so intense. Many of us are feeling it in many different ways. Myself, it's been feeling like a fire from within. It's like the shamans would say, burning from the fire within. It's the internal combustion. It's the heart center fully opening, fully waking up. It, to me, it feels like an implosion, an explosion. I've been keeping my double terminated twin flame energy crystal on my heart for the last few days. Many of us, like myself, haven't... Uh, had an appetite, feeling like eating as we're releasing the last of these energies for the collective. It's like the burning up, the releasing, the letting go. Last night, I was pile-driven into the earth again with these intense waves. Yesterday, there was massive rains, waves of water coming in, a lot of rumbling and explosions in the sky. The thunder beings were here fully. And then last night... As I was pulled into the earth, down on my knees, my face in the wet earth, and the plants, and the flowers, and the grass, I haven't felt this intense of an energy and a breaking up, breaking through since this winter solstice of 2018 and 1221. And I've been building up since that time, working with uh, Chi energy every day since that to build up to this harmonic convergence. Last night, the mind, I was speaking to a divine feminine counterpart, divine goddess of light, the Greek-Irish goddess, the woman who dances with the stars, about the lion gate and the harmonic convergence, and I was telling her my mind is saying, you ain't going to make it to the 15th. <laughs> but my spirit's saying, you got this. you know. So that sometimes the mind tries to get in the way, it tries to creep in there. We're fully on mission. It is true we cannot fail. I do not know exactly what's going to happen. I just know that I live each moment, each day like it's the last. There is a quote from the Buddha. I know this isn't the exact quote, but from memory that one of our biggest problems is that we believe we have a future. We think that there's a future instead of living each moment like it is the last. Fully embodied, fully present fully awake and aware, not in fear, but in full awareness. So the lion's gate will be tomorrow. So these full lion energies, the fire is coming in fully. And then the harmonic convergence on the 15th during the full moon. That is when I will put my full essence into the grid, into the field, as it transmit out into all the hearts of every being in every realm. And we're all on this mission. I spoke directly with the Great Spirit last night, letting Father, Mother, God know that I'm fully here for this mission, for the ascension of Earth, for the ascension of consciousness, the rising to the fourth, fifth density, fully embodying heaven on Earth, that my vessel, this physical form, the avatar that I call it, will do everything as its power to be a vessel for the Holy Spirit, the highest spirit, the holy fire, the holy water, on that moment of the convergence. I'm going to try and do my best to live stream the ceremony that I'm going to do in the sacred ground, what we call the virgin woods. We'll see what happens. I don't know what's going to happen. But I'm going to put my full chi essence into the field, into the grid, into Gaia, in that moment, I'll do my best to make it to that moment. There's many forces that are trying to prevent this from happening, but we are on mission. I've been training for 30 years for this day, for this final breakthrough, for these final days of the false 3D matrix, these final days of the low energies, the separation programming, the false projection into the field. And I'd like to thank everyone that sent their 
golden light and their love to the three feathers, the three crystals that made their way there safely in Vegas right now. So that's going to quickly shift and transform the divine goddess and the two crystal children are bringing the love codes into the field from that point as we connect the portal of Cleveland, Ohio with the portal of Vegas, Nevada, Las Vegas to transform the negative portals to the portals of light. Emmanuel is here with us now, the light of the world, the highest of high, the holiest of holies. Through our heart center, you can feel that. I just felt that in the base of my spine. It's kind of like a dagger stuck in there for a moment. As we release, you know, we're, we are prepared for whatever is going to happen here. I've been training with many masters, teachers, healers, shamans, sages for the last 30 years for what is about to be unleashed, unveiled, released, opened up. The phoenix is rising. The divine feminine and divine masculine have merged fully now through our heart centers. I'm going to speak briefly about an energy that came through yesterday and then read a couple transmissions. There's a lot of energies coming into the mind right now, into the body. So I'm doing my best to stay coherent, stay conscious. The other day, I was looking for a book that I read many years ago because there was a concept that I was trying to remember that I remember was in the book. It was called Seven Minutes in Eternity by a gentleman it was written in 19, around 1929. By a, he was a mystic, spiritual teacher. He wrote many books. His name was w William Dudley Pelly. So I went online because I couldn't remember when the book was written. And I went on Wikipedia only because sometimes they get the dates right on there. But most things on there are part of the construct of the matrix. They were labeling him as a fascist and anti-Semitic because he was speaking out against the war. I know he had his own philosophy, and he was a Christian, so a lot of times Christians are labeled as, you know, fascist or extremist or whatever. You know, he was trying to awaken humanity through the field. So they wrote him out of history. He actually ran for president in the 40s, and they put him in jail for speaking out against uh, the U.S. going to war going into World War II is one two twenty two the two 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 coming through. And he was one of the first people to write about uh, his near death experience that he had. That's what seven minutes in eternity was. It's about a hundred pages. I read it about fifteen years ago and I was looking for the book. His books are really hard to to find. Sometimes you can find them on eBay. He actually wrote his own version of the Bible called the Golden Scripts, which was channeled down through him through the Christ consciousness. It's kind of like the Course in Miracles on steroids, but most of his, all his books are out of publication, so you can just find used ones, and there is a limited publication. So in this, I was looking for the book the other day, and I spent an hour or two, you know, I have hundreds of books, my bedrooms, I tell people like the hologram of the Library of Alexandria. I have thousands of books, so I could not find this book. And then a couple of days ago, as I face planted onto my bed after a long day of work and transmissions and practice, I look up and there's the book sitting right in front of my face on top of a couple other books. And then yesterday, when I did a search for him to see, you know, get a couple of the dates down for this transmission. I found that there's a PDF of it, so I'm going to put the PDF. It'll be in the article that I link below this description if you feel like reading the book. But it was his experience. It was his near-death experience where he tra transitioned to the other side. And there was something in the book which was synchronistic with the blue ray, the blue wave. He talked about going into the blue mist. And it spiraled like a vortex text, which lifted him up to the higher dimensions, which he called fourth dimensional reality. And then he, when he came back, it transformed his life. He became clairaudient and he healed from years of trauma and 
anxiety and stress and then went on to write many books and he was one of the first also that talked about our star brothers and sisters called one book called star guests which was his connection to the star nations which is a great book depending on what happens after the convergence maybe i'll read from some of these books but you might be able to find them on amazon or ebay it's just getting harder to find them because more and more people especially in the new age movement um, have learned about him because he was kind of like the grandfather of this what people are labeling new age he was christian and a person of christ but he also could tap into his clear audience abilities and he was a spiritualist and they, they were doing many things back in the 30s and 40s that a lot of people can't even do today in one of his books i can't remember the name of it why i believe the dead are alive or something like that where these psychics back in the like 30s 40s 1930s 40s in new york city they would have these type of seance things and the, these beings were so powerful you know the humans that they could manifest a plasma material where that deceased loved one can actually manifest form and they would be able to communicate with them it's a very interesting book a lot of these things have been suppressed a lot of this information because this was a great time for the spiritual movement for the spiritual awakening especially you know after the 1920s then you know from world war one into the great depression and then the catalyst was world war ii especially with the dropping of the bombs when the east came to the west to bring their teachings now the north is coming to the south the eagle is flying with the condor the divine masculine the divine feminine are flying together okay so i think i'll stop rambling for now and do these transmissions because i believe i got the point across i'm not sure <laughs> sometimes when i start recording it's things just flow easier than others and sometimes there's too much information coming into my consciousness, my field. So I just kind of go with the flow and see what happens. But a lot of times there's a point that I want to project into the field that might help certain people. And sometimes it, I totally lose it. I totally forget what the point of that conversation was going to be. So today, with the Lion's Gate fully opening tomorrow, I'm going to read from woked.co the Lionsgate portal is here to drown away all the toxic negativity and this is by daisy magnum it's a phenomenon that many of us are unfamiliar with however it can have a deep and profound impact on our lives on august 8th the Lionsgate portal located between the sun and the sirius star opened bringing a powerful and life-changing energy upon us the light and energy that emanates from the Lionsgate portal are that of positivity, growth, and self-realization. It will open our eyes to the lives that we are currently living while simultaneously helping us to see that there is a better life available to us if only we are willing to grow, change, and evolve into a better version of ourselves. While this may sound incredibly simple, it's far more complex than many realize. This isn't just calling on you to readjust your day-to-day -day activities or reconsider the way that you tipped your waitress after dinner last night. The kind of growth and reflection that the portal will call for is deep and profound. This shift in energy will focus primarily on your spiritual self and the way that drives your daily routine. Your efforts will focus on spiritual fulfillment and enlightenment, bringing you to the next level of consciousness. This is the shift that we will all feel during this time. Suddenly, our priorities will shift, leading us to alter the way that we view the world around us. As the energy from the Lionsgate portal showers down upon us, we will feel it on a number of levels, including changes to our conscious and unconscious thinking, and even down to the very makeup of our DNA. This is a sensation that we will resonate from deep within us, changing every aspect of who we are from the ground up. The energy from the Lionsgate portal will open our eyes, our minds, and our hearts to the struggle of those around us, especially those who need our care and attention the most. 
It encourages empathy, a trait that is often overlooked and undervalued in today's money-driven, materialistic society. We have sacrificed care, kindness, and compassion in our search for the fame and fortune, a shift that has incredibly negative impact on our whole as a world our world as a whole this highly spiritual energy will help us to step back refocus and return to the basic we will once again find ourselves drawn to focusing on our families friends and the impact that we are leaving on the world around us the most important thing that you can do is to enter into this time with an open mind the energy of the lion's gate portal will bring great change but it is also focused on bettering our world are you part of the change and movement forward, or are you going to be left behind? Source, woke.co. So that's the the image in this video is the lion with Metatron's cube. I thought it was a pretty amazing image. That's one that you can meditate upon. Metatron's Metatron's cube. Metatron is connected to this Lion's Gate portal. The Lions and Sirius, the star of Sirius and the Syrians, are also connected. Although all things are connected through the Stargate, some things may resonate at this time more than others. Depends on where we are in our journey and our practices. The one point I forgot that I was trying to make here. <laughs> things, see, things come to me in time. Things that I would want to talk about. They're at a loss. So the seven minutes in eternity with the aftermath uh, by William Dudley Pelly. Now, the, this book first was released as an article by, let's see here, okay. So the William Pelly, it's funny because um, on Wikipedia they also call him, a, he was a mysticism and occultism, even though he was Christian, although occult really just means hidden, that which is hidden being revealed, so yeah, he did reveal much of what was hidden through his works. But the publication that the Seven Minutes in Eternity was published in, it was called the American Magazine. That was, I believe, in 1928. And at that time, it had a circulation, the magazine, of like 2.2 million people, which was big for that time. I mean, even for today, that's a pretty big circulation. And millions of people read that article, and it was like one of the most read issues of the American magazine, and it was one where they had the, the most response, the biggest response. They got thousands and thousands of letters. It took them, I think, six to nine months with the help of a secretary to respond to the letters. And most of the letters, he said, were positive and confirming the experience he had. And he said that several of the letters talked about things that he didn't even write in the article that happened to him, that happened to themselves. Because at this time, you were labeled crazy if you talked about these experiences. And he was one, you know, one of the first people who was very brave to even put it out there because it was part of that unknown. You'd, people didn't know how people would respond. But people, consciousness was ready at that time for this information, for the type of information that I put out in these videos and other love workers, light workers are putting out in their works and their books and their videos. We're totally ready. We're in unity consciousness. So at the time, this was a huge shift in the 1920s for people to start talking about their near death experiences and their out of body experiences and their spiritual practices. That 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 was part of this. What is manifesting now in these final days of the false matrix? was the work that our ancestors, our brothers and sisters of the light in those times and throughout all of history that were ridiculed or suppressed or tortured, murdered, whatever, you know, that these brave souls are what ushered in this golden age that we're transitioning to. I know we're not fully on New Earth yet. The full Earth, the New Earth grid is completely over Gaia now, but we're still releasing what is left of the dark, what is left of the corruption of the construct of the false matrix as we transition into what we call the divine matrix. Because the matrika matrix was ma is water, trix or trika is divinity, 
holy, sacred. So it's basically saying holy water, or divine water, sacred water, divine feminine. It's the manifestation of the Tao. Matur, physical matter, matter, water, terra nova, the waters of the terra, the tarot, kind of like master, master, mastering an art. So today's dream spell for August 7th. Happy, this is from Dream Spell Journey by Volon Votan and Volon Ilk. Happy magic flight of the wizard wave spell. The power of timelessness transcends through the cosmic world bridger who represents the 13 heavens. Today's Kin 26 cosmic world bridger, 13 world bridger, is marking the 13th tone of the wizard wave spell in the 13th day of the first moon of the magnetic wizard year. An auspicious 1313 harmonization. Exactly the kin 26 represents the power of 13 doubled. 13 plus 13 equals 26, and it also is a fractal of 260, the numeric code of the sacred Zolkin count. The kin 26 is also equivalent to the ancient Maya sign of 13 Kimi, 13 death which is the 13th clair sign inscribed on the sarcophagus lid of Maya King Pakal, and a key aspect in the decoding of the Telectinon prophecy of Pakal Votan. It is now known that the inscriptions on Pakal's sarcophagus represent his ancestral lineage and that 13 Kimi was the birth sign of his father. The 13 Kimi also marked the second birth of the Palenque Triad of Gods, who is the third god in imper importance. This deity is scientifically known as G3, God 3, and he represents the death of the sun during the night and its passage through the underworld, Shilkababa, before re resurrecting again at dawn. G3 was born four days after the great deity of the triad, Nine Ilk, Balon Ilk, Kin 22, on the long count day of 1.18.5.3. Point six, 13 Kimi, Kin 26. For the same reason, the triads first two born are also referred to as the Plank Hero Twins, G1 and G3. The 13 Kimi is also represents the inscriptions of the throne of Temple 19, alongside the glyph of Nine Ilk, Balon Ilk. According to Valom Votan, this clear sign is the fractal analog to the 13 Kimi on the throne and on the tomb of Pakal Votan. Therefore, it confirms the roles of Balon Ilk and Volom Votan emanations within a new revelation which includes the Balon Ilk Chronicles of the Matrix, the seven leaves of the Book of the Seven Generations. This is because the Palenque Hero Twins, G1, Nine Ilk, Kin 22, and G3, 13 Kimi, Kin 26, were embodied by the emanations of Balon Ilk, Kin 22, and Volom Votan. He associated himself to Kin 26 because this Kin was his solar rotation the first time he visited Palenque. Synchro synchronically, the Maya birth sign of G1, 9 L Kin 22, was synchronized with the dream spell Kin 89, Spectral Moon, in the dream time, which exactly marked the ascension of Volom Votan. This constitutes another confirmation of the galactic Maya twin archetypes, the emanations of Valon Votan and Balon Ilk. Exactly today is coded 1.13, Moon 1, Day 13, which is the fractal of Kin 113, the combined power of VV and below BI at the beginning of the prophetic mystery in 1981. Kin 26, White Cosmic World Bridger. The code for today, I endure in order to equalize transcending opportunity. I seal the store of death with the cosmic tone of presence. I am guided by the power of heart. Harmonic 7 Lunar Store. Remember elegance of challenge. So yes, we've taken on this challenge elegantly through this time of great challenges, of great change, of great manifestation. I appreciate each and every one of you for connecting with me, for sharing your stories in the comments below these videos. I wish you all well through these great times of great changes. The golden light, the golden portal is fully emanating now.
the gold dragon, the gold Buddha, the gold light, the Christ light, the Buddha light, is shining now unto this realm upon us all. Last night I saw it fully in the sunset when the golden emanations were coming through my window when I had the double terminated crystal on my heart center, the middle Dantian, as I was being pulled deeply, deepest, deepest into the portal, into the still portal, the still center of the vortex, the source, the zero point energy, as my heart was expanding out to the ends of the universe, my consciousness was imploding into the still center. We just ride the waves, keep going through and through and through. We're breaking through every portal, every gateway. All veils are being lifted. All seals are being removed. All codes are being revealed. And we are bridging the rainbow bridge, the electromagnetic spectrum through our chakras, through our central channel, from our crown to the hoi yin, the root chakra, the lowest yin point, at the base of the spine, where the kundalini rests and emanates as that energy rises up the spine to light up the codes and the crystal palace in the brain, the pineal gland, the pituitary glands are becoming fully activated now. We are merging all timelines. We're emerging all realms, all realities into this one still point so that we can then project that energy, the chi, out into the field with the highest good, the highest love, the highest light, through all time and all space, transcending all things, through the void, through the yin-yang, into the great mystery. As we anchor in the energies of the unknow unknowable mind of Buddha, what we call the great mystery, or the great source, the great spirit, which is in all things and around all things, everywhere and every wind, within and without, the 37 into the 73, the 73 into the 37. We are bringing the internal to the external and the external into the internal. That's why some people may feel like they're flipping out or being flipped inside out. Everything is being exposed. Everything is being revealed. So stay in the heart center, beautiful beings of light. Thank you all for sharing your love. Thank you all that were, have been on mission. And thank you all that brought their gold light, their love light, for the journey of the three feathers into Vegas. They made it safely, and they are there now, grounding in the codes. We are merging into the light. We are re-emerging, rebirthing, and coming out of the cocoon, the chrysalis. Our wings are spreading. Our wings, our angelic, etheric wings are fully developed now. You may feel them rising up out of your spine, out of your back, out of your shoulders, into the heavens, into the light, where we can fly freely. So you can use, in the seven minutes in eternity, when he talked about the blue mist. Now many of us see that in meditation. Or it might be a blue mist, a gold mist, a white mist, a red mist. But it's that blue light, the blue wave, which is the higher one of the higher frequencies, the higher chakras. It is the wind gate, the throat chakra, where we speak our truth, where we speak from our heart, where we manifest love through our voices, our holy voices, with love, honor, and grace. I speak these words to you now, beloved beings of light. I'd like to thank everyone also that has sent their transmissions for the Starseed Blueprint and being part of this love evolution evolution. You can find other transmissions, the original one that I created, and other love workers on primedisclosure.com forward slash blueprint. And you can also, if you could, if you feel called to create your own transmission, please post the link. You know, I want you to upload it to YouTube, uh, post it in the comments under the original blueprint on YouTube. That would be very helpful. I'd also like to thank everyone that has been called to the mission for the Healing Retreat Center, Healing Center and Sustainable Community in Ecuador, South America, and the foothills of the Andes, our beloved Gaia's Kundalini rising up from the base of the spine in Ecuador and to, through Peru, the Andes Mountains, and to Chile, the crown 
of Gaia through the heart center, the solar center of Machu Picchu. This divine range, this divine field is connected to our beloved Himalayan mountains in Tibet and India and Nepal and China, which is connected to the divine Kunlun mountains. And that is the art I teach, the practice, the system called Kunlun from Qingfeng Daoshi Sifu Max. I'll put the link in the description below for his book on the Kunlun. And you can join us for raising funds for the Ecuador Healing Retreat Center. We're using a CBD business. You can join us on CBDPeaceOil.com. That's CBDPeaceOil.com. I'll put that link in also the, the description. So please leave a comment. Please share this video with your networks. Uh, let us know what you're experiencing through these fiery lion portals. I know some people are being lifted up while people are being pulled down. This is the yin, the yang coming together. You know, if you're going deep into the earth, getting pulled into the earth, you're going into the crystalline grid. If you're being lifted up, that's the levity. That's part of the rising, the, the fire rising up. So depending on what your mission is or what we're all in this together. So we're all on mission for the ascension of Gaia, the ascension of consciousness and all life and all realms. So know that whatever you're feeling, whatever you're experiencing is part of this mission, is part of this transition, transmission, the transcendence of physical consciousness into the gold light of bliss, eternal bliss consciousness, which is the divine matrix, the divine source the divine codes. So just know that you are perfect exactly as you are. You are perfectly on mission. You are exactly where you need to be through this final breakthrough process to break on through to the other side, to be the bridge, to bridge this shore and the other shore. You're like a bridge across this great river of time that is bringing the non-physical into the physical and the physical into the non-physical. We are merging like I said, all timelines and part of the timelines are physical and some of the timelines are in the non-physical, just like some of the grids. There's a physical waters, there's a non-physical waters. And as we merge the two together, we will be walking in both worlds simultaneously as world bridgers, the physical world and the non-physical world. So you're doing a great job, brothers and sisters of the light. Know that you are fully activated you are fully on mission and we will be manifesting our codes from the lion's gate into the harmonic convergence fully aware fully active fully conscious so thank you brothers and sisters of the light i love you all namaste